It took a while to get there, but I can now safely say that I am very much done being a tortured artist and human in general. Hi, I'm Alice Hoffmann, an indie artist from Austria. Yes, this was the introduction to today's topic. And it's been a while, because <laughs> I've had a little phase of being an oh-so-tortured poor soul. Even though there was so much good stuff happening these last months and I guess in general, actually, if we're being, being honest. But I was pretty damn good at getting myself bogged down and just, you know, being stuck in the past and, I don't know, my anger. So it was really my lack of joy that made me think that everywhere I look, the world is just a shithole and everyone is suffering. It's definitely not just me. I couldn't enjoy simple stuff like shows or a lot of books and whatever texts because I just thought about any detail that would have needed improvement and it's kinda hard to enjoy anything if all you are looking for is flaws, whether it's consciously or not. And I think I haven't made it a secret that for a long time I found many people unlikable and I guess unredeemable for whatever they've done or didn't do. And in return, it just seemed like I never had enough time to spend it with the people that I'm uh, sort of addicted to. <laughs> because when nearly everything seems shit, then the one good thing that you find along the way is kind of like meth. I suppose. I ne I've never taken any hard drugs, but... And you know, I've been trying to lose weight for a while and obviously I don't want to use food as a way to escape the sensation of feeling like everything sucks. So I was kind of stuck with my feeling sucky and being the woeful, tortured person sometimes. I mean, in general, I have so many tools that I can use to get over it. I guess there are a lot of people in my life that I can open up to if I want. Problem is, I kind of don't want to do that because I keep telling myself, oh, you weak little shit need to rely on some person and you don't even pay them. You are being such a selfish little bitch. You don't want to try anything else first. But yeah, I could make a whole other different video on just my inner critic, I suppose. So I don't want to dip my toes too deep into that water just now. I'm working on it. Let's <laughs> just leave it at that. <sighs> so a pretty funny, funny thing for me was realizing that my general level of anger just isn't really relatable to most people that I've talked to about it. I try to see the humor in it because otherwise it just... It's getting pretty old to feel alienated and like I don't belong anywhere or like people can't understand me. However, the exception to that rule was so far people who had it way worse in my opinion or like people who I specifically paid <laughs> to care about me. Like therapists and coaches like I know they, they generally do care but they, they don't have time to care about everyone all the time because the day only has 24 hours so you know what I mean. But yeah, in general that's the kind of people who got my point without needing a lot of explanation and and even when I try to explain my perspective to some people, it seems like it just doesn't land. Like, they are just unable to understand. I don't know if it's um, because they can't or they don't want to. Sometimes it's just not working and this is what it is. Yeah, as you might have noticed by now, I remember slides very well years after they happened and sometimes even decades. And it seems like I remember those things in 4K, full resolution, saturated colors, and I kind of keep forgetting about good stuff more quickly. Yeah, uh, an interesting thing is, I've some, uh, some time ago I read that generally for people it is more like the opposite, that the past becomes a bit rosier and more nostalgic because they forget about the shitty stuff and <laughs> kind of only remember the good old days, so to say. Can't say that that's the same for me, unless I'm being more conscious about it. And yeah, so I'm making it a very conscious decision to remember the good stuff and not have it pale over time. It's even even really, really great times. Like the first date with my boyfriend. You know, back at the time I thought like, wow, this is burned into my brain. I will always remember it the same way as it happened, just like the way it was. And 
Yeah, for a while, for a very long time, I remembered everything in high detail. But at some point, I think I stopped um, actively remembering it. And now it's uh, a little bit more hazy. Even though I know it was one of the best days of my life, I kind of have to dig a little bit deeper to find it again. And I want to make sure I don't lose the thing. Yeah, I suppose it would maybe be a good idea to write that sort of stuff down and really allow myself to immerse myself into it, even if it doesn't seem super productive at the moment. And kind of, I mean, what a sort of judgment is saying it's self-indulgent. I mean, what's so bad about it? So here we go. You see, I'm trying to be way less judgmental to myself about anything really. And it's so easy to forget. Oopsie. But I'm trying. I'm really trying. <sighs> but yeah, um, these past weeks it seemed like left to its own devices, life is kinda just a cycle of shit and <laughs> there is, like there is no inherent value in it because I'm just really good at making myself miserable and I really consider no one lucky to be alive even like people who are forward about how they treasure their life and I was just no you lying son of a bitch <laughs> it's all you know it's all in my perspective it's really nothing that the people did wrong or didn't explain well it's, it was really just my own i guess unwillingness to just consider that maybe things don't have to be shit so being stuck in all that negativity i kind of got to the point where i thought to myself and really clung to the thought that if i allow myself to be happy in this sort of world with you know climate change, people suffering to, due to all kinds of abuse and stuff I can't really change, then I don't know, isn't it just uh, intellectually dishonest and am I not just abandoning everyone and I guess my past self? I don't know. It's really hard to explain because it doesn't make sense, but while you're stuck in negativity, it seems like the right thing. I know. Now I know. <laughs> But yeah, any, anyhow, that's where I was and it was not so fun. So I don't think anyone's pain helps anyone else, but I still didn't want to just abandon myself, others or whomever by being happy. Even though, you know, if you are happy, you can act more easily on stuff you believe in, I would say. So it wasn't logical or anything. I guess the thing that kinda got me out of it was also at the same time seeing the badassness of just going on living and I guess um, embracing the opportunity that comes with living because um, what else is there? You can't really do anything without living. And this sounds like really basic stuff, like mentioning it is just I'm 14 and this is deep stuff. But I guess it kind of needs to be said sometimes or I guess maybe actively thought about and I don't know, just uh, felt. Maybe it needs to be felt. At least for me it made a very big difference. I've spent a bunch of years by now trying to understand my mental structure and why I am the way I am and I think it's getting to a point where I can often tell, yeah, okay, I'm doing this and that because of whatever inner working. I suppose I still stumble on nuances here and there, which, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty happy to explore details and maybe sometimes I'm thinking about it too much, but I enjoy it. As long as I enjoy it, I think there is nothing wrong with it. There have been times where I've been too obsessive with trying to understand the why and all in all I really think trying to understand oneself is kind of an underrated activity. So it seems that a lot of people talk about it but actually doing it is so fucking exhausting that most people don't seem to do it. In my experience. I could be wrong and I hope I'm wrong but in my day-to-day -day experience it really seems that most people don't really know themselves that well. But to me it can sometimes for example still happen that I ruminate on one thing for hours and get completely stuck in it and then I finally snap out of it. It's still a few hours lost but it's it's okay, it's just human. Sometimes I just really would like to figure that shit out way quicker and optimize it so much that you could say, yep, that's a robot, perfect android. Hmm. Maybe that's just not gonna happen. 
So in terms of CPTSD, I don't have that many ongoing symptoms showing up most of the time, but something like this ruminating and really deeply obsessing over stuff and replaying it in my mind in various routes or like um, trying out different dialogue options and somehow it always seems to escalate nonetheless. Apparently that's an emotional flashback <laughs> kind of situation. <laughs> Uh, until recently I didn't know that. So the funny thing is I didn't find it shocking or anything, I was just like, huh, need to know, because it happens anyway, but now I know what the fuck it is. I am aware that probably the vast majority of people are a sort of daydreaming in one direction or the other, but it's probably a different thing if the intensity and the way it goes on and on is just different. But I think even this sort of replaying things in my mind is getting lesser over time now that I'm unmasking more and in case you've never heard of unmasking in my case it's uh, related to autism because I try to generally uh, hide my traits but in general I guess my whole personality when I'm not around people that I know very well and in my free time for example at work I am extremely reserved and maybe to a degree cold because I just don't really I don't want the backlash of being me <laughs> because I can be kind of savage and too honest too much I don't know maybe one day I'll be at a point where I say you know what I'll be myself anywhere I go and I'll just be myself 100% if you don't like it well sucks to be you I guess at least sometimes I'm not there yet and I'm still very cautious of overstepping in social situations I have a sort of tendency to overanalyze reactions to whatever I've been saying, who kinda doesn't. But at the end of the day, I wanna go towards the direction of being honest. I think it's the only way to build a life that doesn't seem like it would have been better to just not have been born. So for a more recent commission, a client showed me a document of somewhat uh, custom affirmations that they made. And uh, the commission is basically the background for the affirmation text, which is quite an honor, to be honest. <laughs> and yeah, obviously I'm not going to tell you what the document said, but in any case, the idea behind it just was very inspiring to me because I was still every now and then in this sort of abyss mindset that everything sucks and it would be better to just destroy each and every last thing so that nothing can ever live again. No, I really was thinking that. I know it sounds so over dramatic, but I was seriously fucking thinking that. I'm sorry. I was actually thinking that shit. It is what it is. But yeah, after some time of kinda struggling to allow myself to make a similar thing, I decided, you know what, I'm doing this and oh boy, it did really hurt to write down positive things for yourself, which is so counterintuitive, isn't it? Like it seems like that would be very comfortable and nice, but pretty often adding a line was just like, oh no, shit, I noticed the tears in my eyes welling up. Awful, I hate it. Oh no, but you gotta get through this sort of, of stuff because whenever it's emotionally hard like this, you kinda realize, yeah, this is the right direction to go in. So I keep reading this affirmation document most days. I try to do it daily, but sometimes I just genuinely forget about it with being busy with other stuff. But I think it's having an effect already. And sometimes I realize, yeah, I gotta rewrite some stuff and I guess I let go of some ideas more easily now. The thing is, it's kind of easier to be in homeostasis and just content with everything when I'm on my own, at home, with nothing happening, because nothing is happening. It's just a completely different thing being around people and just, I guess, the chaotic nature that socializing in itself brings. Like, it doesn't even have to be that the people are doing anything wrong, really. They are just being themselves and it's it's just different from being alone at home in peace. <sighs> so I realize myself sometimes slipping back into old behaviors way more around people. <sighs> but I guess it's actually a good thing because then it's the only way to know that you still gotta keep letting go. And uh, the thing is you can't force yourself to let go. It's 
it has to happen on its own, kinda. The nice thing about the affirmations document that I now wrote for myself is that some of these things that I want for myself seemed really unattainable and like it, it even felt wrong to write it down like I'm unworthy and it just won't happen and it's a kind of a waste of time to even think about ever getting it. But I've been dropping that way of thinking, I think, <laughs> apparently. So one of those lines definitely doesn't apply every day, but I honestly would say it's getting there. And it is, I eat just enough, just right, neither starving nor overstuffing myself. The thing is, I'm allowing myself to think this is true for me, which is kind of revolutionary. Because before I would have said, yeah, I'm not allowed to tell this about myself and think it might as well be true because I haven't done it yet. But I guess that way of thinking just kind of keeps us stuck in old stuff way longer than it needs to be. So yeah, turns out allowing myself to be happy with everything as is is kind of hard on some days and other days it's turning really easy. Yeah, I think it's really funny how some positive messages can be more painful than whatever you think is what you deserve. And I've been thinking back that actually most of the negative stuff I've been hearing is so long ago. <laughs> I mean, nowadays <laughs> there are adults who are that age. It's just so crazy if you think about it. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not that old, and I don't really think I, I don't really think about myself as an old person. It's just it's been so many years. <laughs> Anyway, I'm letting my guard down now and I'm trusting again and that's my decision. There's nothing you can do about it. So yeah, I don't know if any of that sounds like a whole lot of nothing and it only makes sense to me again. But as I said, it has been so exhausting being this tortured artist and human and I'm fucking done with it. So here I am. There is one very big promise I want to make to you. I'll be doing my own thing. And if I disappoint you at some point, that's okay. You are allowed to be disappointed by me. It's your decision. It's your right to feel whatever you feel. And I won't try to cater to that. And I want you to do your thing. But yeah, in any case, I'm trying, but I'm just human. And working on being honest will mean that at some point I will probably look like a very huge jumpers. And you might regret ever subscribing to me. And I'm not sorry. Have a great day. Hi there. You know, I decided I'd like to read my affirmation documents to you just because. However, keep in mind that these are specifically chosen words that I picked for myself. So if you want to do a similar thing, make sure to really tailor it to your own needs. And I won't give any context to any of the stuff. So if it somehow doesn't make sense, then that's what it is. So here goes the first and probably only ever reading of my affirmations. I can write anytime I want. I'm allowed to fail. I'm allowed to spontaneously create new artworks. I may be called cringe, too much, weird, creepy, savage, brutal, weak, sensitive, crybaby, off, inelegant, loser, depressing, melodramatic, cold, hardass, Predictable, robotic, arrogant, just a friend. However, none of these judgments ever address the truth of my essence and potential. The only thing that counts is being true to myself. By being myself, I free others to see their own freedom. I'm allowed to be happy and optimistic. I'm allowed to want to exist. I'm allowed to forgive. I'm allowed to hold no opinion, cling to no judgment and let the moment flow on to see events further unfold and tell a more complete story. I'm allowed to look back at the past with a sense of wonder and nostalgia, appreciate the times, whatever challenge I encountered back then, even if I'm not content with a remaining scar just yet. I'm allowed to have big, inconvenient feelings. I'm allowed to feel nothing or even contentment in the face of disagreeable events and behaviors. I'm allowed to rest and produce nothing. I'm allowed to give people the benefit of the doubt and see the best in them, even if they turn out to make unwise choices after all. I'm allowed to leave people if I don't want to create a future with them, no matter the reason or lack thereof. I'm allowed to follow through with controversial decisions that some might label questionable. 
I'm always allowed to change my mind. I'm allowed to love and enjoy flawed, imperfect things and people. I'm allowed to see everything I create as flawless despite its flaws and impactful enough even if to my eyes no one else ever is noticeably changed by it. I don't have to create masterpieces to be allowed to keep creating. I don't need allowance to be the way I am. I don't have to be understood to thrive. I eat just enough, just right, neither starving nor overstuffing myself. I am reliable and instill trust in those around me. Remember, what do you want?